Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my presentation uh, uh, about the excitation of resonant uh, mass density and viscosity sensors at uh, higher modes. I want to start uh, with the motivation for these sensors. A very common way to uh, measure viscosity, which is the ratio of uh, shear stress and uh, velocity gradient of uh, fluid, is depicted on the right side here on the, this slide. Uh, a liquid is placed between two cylinders and, uh, for example, the, outer uh, the, the inner cylinder is rot rotated to a certain uh, rotational speed and the torque necessary uh, for that is measured and then these two quantities are related to each other to extract the um, viscosity of the liquid. This works great for so-called Newtonian liquids, but uh, when it comes to more complex liquids, for example, viscoelastic liquids, uh, the movement will be oscillatory to rec finally record the frequency response of the liquid. And uh, what re rheologists actually do, they record such figures where they split up the uh, complex viscosity or the shear models in the real and imaginary part. And the reason why I show you this figure uh, is to make you aware about the frequency uh, where n normally these laboratory instruments are operated. So they range from some uh, millihertz to some hundreds of hertz. On the other side of the spectrum, there are devices such as the quartz crystal uh, micropellants, which is operated in the megahertz range. So we get a frequency gap from one, some hundreds of hertz to the megahertz range, and we actually want to bridge this gap with uh, devices, with resonant devices. Furthermore, we want to have viscosity sensors and mass density sensors, which should be applicable for low-cost production handheld devices and uh, in -line measurements. So these are just some few points for our motivation. Concepts uh, we investigated during the last years are depicted here. We uh, investigated straight wires, suspended platelets, spiral spring sensors, torsional oscillators, tuning fork based setups, U-shaped wired and membrane based uh, setups. And simply speaking, what all of these devices have in common is that higher viscosities uh, yield higher damping and higher mass densities yield lower resonance frequencies, except from devices as we heard in the previous talk where it's uh, the opposite for the damping. Um, so this is just uh, very simply explained. And today I will uh, be talking about uh, differences or possible differences of first and second mode of uh, the tuning fork, the U-shaped wire and the double membrane sensor. Um, First of all, I want to explain how we, uh, how the approach for this investigation was. So we tried to measure two uh, modes, and it turned out this was always the first and the second mode, if it is measurable in air. If this was the case, we uh, measured the frequency responses of the devices in uh, liquids at different viscosities and mass densities. And once we got that, uh, we determined uh, the resonance frequency and the quality factor of the recorded frequencies response by a very efficient uh, uh, alg algorithm technique introduced 2012 by Alexander Niedermeyer. And once we had uh, the evaluated resonance frequencies and quality factors for the first and second mode, we applied uh, or we fitted the parameters for a general generalized model relating the resonance frequency and the quality factor uh, to mass density and viscosity. If you're interested in this generalized model, which was uh, successfully uh, implemented for all sorts of resonating sensors, there will be a poster today uh, in the poster session A3P and the poster number is R10. So the advantage of this is that we then have a model for uh, resonance frequency and quality factor dependent on viscosity and mass density. So we can separate the effect of viscosity on the resonance frequency and mass density on the resonance frequency and for the quality factor, the same thing. And then actually the investigation is, do the sensors we investigated show different sensitivities or responses uh, at the first and the second mode? The first sensor I, uh, which was investigated is the tuning fork sensor, which consists of a steel tuning fork depicted on the right-hand side. 
The steel tuning fork is actuated by an electromagnetic at one side of the tuning fork and read out, read out via uh, electrodynamic pickup, which is much bigger here, um, which consists of just of a permanent magnet uh, in the center of a wound coil. And yeah, here we see uh, the measurements of uh, in, in air for the first and the second mode, and here uh, the measurements in, in liquids. And yeah, we investigated pretty low viscous liquids ranging from uh, one millipascal milli second to almost 10 millipascal seconds. And so the evaluation of this is then that the sensitivity of the first and the second mode so that there is almost no, no difference. The second sensor uh, we investigated is the so-called U-shaped wire, which actually consists of a U-shaped tungsten wire, which is uh, enclosed in this uh, closed aluminum setup. So this is really important if you want to get accurate measurements that the whole setup is closed, because uh, simply evaporation of your liquid would change the temperature such that you do not exact the exact uh, viscosity value, and then it is really difficult to draw conclusions from that. So you should always uh, close your setups. Uh, here we have a picture. Oops, sorry. Uh, here we have a picture. I don't know if you can see it of the of the U-shaped wire. So the U-shaped wire carries sinusoidal currents, and the wire is placed in a, a outer magnetic field. So it starts oscillating in this direction, which in turn induces a voltage on the tip of the resonator, which we take as measure for reading out our viscosity sensor. Here we see um, the first and the second mode in air. Uh, interesting thing is that the second mode is uh, almost as, at the same ratio as for the tuning fork. It's 6.4 something, which is act exactly the ratio you would get for a singly clamped pin for the second mode. Here we see the measurements uh, in liquids. We use the same liquids as for the tuning fork. And for this sensor, uh, it turns out that the second mode is slightly less sensitive for both mass density and viscosity. So one thing uh, I forgot to mention is it might be important that the sensors do not show uh, differences in the sensitivities, because if we want to get to other frequencies. You could just operate the sensor at a higher frequency to cover this uh, aforementioned frequency range. And for this, it might be beneficial if they do not show, show uh, a difference in the sensitivities of different modes. A sensor which was actually designed to uh, show different sensitivities is the so-called double membrane sensor, which is uh, depicted on this slide. Uh, the greenish parts here are used for bonding. And the white parts uh, of these two things, which are actually the vibrating membranes, are the vibrating uh, areas of the membrane. These uh, membranes consist of uh, copper-coated polymer sheets, which are structured by uh, photol photolithography and wet etching, and are uh, excited by means of Lorentz forces and read out <laughs> via a motion-induced voltage. And the nice thing about the sensor is that it can be operated in symmetric and anti-symmetric mode. So the liquid would be between the two membranes. And it is intended that the symmetric mode, which is such a squeezing mode, uh, is more uh, sensitive to viscosity, where the anti-symmetric mode should be more sensitive to mass density. These are the measurements in air and in liquids again, where we uh, investigated a much higher viscosity range uh, but the lower mass density range. And the evaluation of this is as uh, intended that uh, the first mode is much more sensitive to viscosities, where the uh, second mode hardly isn't. And uh, the second mode is much more sensitive uh, to the mass density of the liquid. Yeah, I finally want to conclude my talk. We. Uh, were able to make measurements in liquids at the first and second mode for three of our resonant viscosity and mass density sensors. It showed out that uh, in, within this investigation, only the, the double membrane sensor showed significant differences in its sensitivities. And from the outlook, of course, we still have to uh, investigate other ge geometries. 
And for example, for the tuning fork, uh, we have to finish the closed form uh, modeling, which will be not a too challenging task as uh, the equations for the oscillating cylinder are well known and also the beam equations. Okay, thank you very much for your attention.